I'm Tasha Murray with the Invasive Species Council of Metro Vancouver talking about ivy today. It has become problematic in natural spaces and human impacted spaces all across Metro Vancouver. It spreads vegetatively and by seed and unfortunately it's still readily available through the horticulture industry so it's available for purchase at garden centers and people do maintain it on their properties. But yet we know that it's having a real impact on understories and in forest canopies and is a serious invader. So we're at a patch of ivy here and many of us who work with invasive species are accustomed to calling it English ivy, but we actually have two different species of ivy here in Metro Vancouver. We have an English ivy and an Irish ivy, and although they are two distinct species, they're virtually impossible to distinguish by the human eye. The way that you'd tell them apart is you'd have to look underneath the leaves and you'd be looking for small hairs called trichomes, and the direction of the trichomes is different for English ivy and Irish ivy, but really you'd need a microscope or a hand lens to distinguish to that detail. So when I talk about ivy now, I just collectively refer to them as the ivies because management is really the same for both species. Ivy is a woody evergreen perennial and it actually has two distinct life stages. So the immature or juvenile stage lasts for about 10 years and that manifests as a vine or a ground cover. And so you can see a juvenile stage of ivy right here. The leaves have that typical ivy kind of look with the three or five points. Um, the veins are quite prominent, but you can definitely get a distinct ivy shape there. Once the plant has enough light, it can form the mature or adult stage, which I have in my hand here. At this point, the vine is able to grow vertically up a tree or building. And these, this mature stage has leaves that are more rounded compared to the juvenile. And they're often a little bit larger and sometimes even lighter colored. And when they get to that stage, they're also able to reproduce. So you can see the berries here from last year's flowering season. Ivy berries are toxic to birds, especially native birds who might not be adapted to the toxin. And ivy also has health and safety impacts on humans. So the leaves and the berries are also toxic to humans and to livestock. Humans can also develop contact dermatitis coming in touch with the leaves. And so it's really important to be wearing gloves and to protect yourself if you're working on this species. Another safety consideration is if you have ivy growing on the ground, that can also um, be a place where you know garbage and potentially hazardous things like needles or syringes and even vermin and rats and things could be hiding and so that's a problem in places where you have large patches of the ground covered by ivy because you can't always see what's in underneath. Ivy has lots of different impacts on the environment. Ivy forms dense monocultures that grow along the ground and climb trees and structures. It smothers native vegetation and may inhibit understory growth in riparian forests. Ivy is especially detrimental to trees. It can engulf and encircle shrubs and trees of all sizes. Ivy cover deprives bark of normal contact with air and microorganisms. The sheer weight of ivy is capable of breaking branches and toppling trees, especially in conjunction with storm or disease events. Ivy also serves as a reservoir for bacteria leaf scorch. It's more difficult for tree assessors to determine the health of trees by visual observation when trees are covered in dense ivy. Ivy has the ability to damage infrastructure upon which it grows. Ivy caused tree failures may also harm infrastructure and residents. Adventitious roots on the juvenile stems allow the plant to adhere to structures such as walls or fences or even other vegetation like trees in this case. The best way to remove ivy is manual control, so cutting or clipping and priority is always to remove the ivy from the trees. So I'm gonna show you how to do what we call a lifesaver ring. So 
So I'm cutting the ivy vines at about chest height and then I'm very carefully stripping them downwards from the tree and ideally I'm trying to remove all the ivy within one or two meters from the base of the trunk. Any ivy left higher than chest height in the tree can simply be left on the tree. It's actually a safety hazard if you try and pull that out of the tree. And once you've cut off the root supply, all that material will simply eventually die off anyway. So while I'm doing this, as you're stripping the ivy away and using your tool to cut the ivy vines, you have to be really careful not to injure the tree itself. So after I've removed the tree ivy, next I'm gonna focus on the ground cover ivy. And again, I'm gonna be using my clippers and trying to remove as much of the ivy material, including the roots from the ground as possible. In an area like this, where it's largely ivy, I might be able to use a burrito roll technique where I'm essentially removing and rolling up the ivy as a carpet as I go, using my clippers to clip any stubborn roots. For more information about ivy, check out the Best Management Practices Guide for English and Irish Ivies in the Metro Vancouver region. Find the link in the description below. For more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on social media and check out www.iscmv.ca to learn more.